Hello everyone, welcome back to Abandoned Mines of Pennsylvania. Uh, today we're going to be covering uh, mine subsidence, why it happens, and the issues that it causes for not only Pennsylvania, but many, many, many other states. Um, anywhere where you have underground mining, you're going to have mine subsidence. Um, first off, please excuse the sound of construction in the background. Um, there's a construction site not too far from here but they have done their research and will not be affected by um, the mines of Sidence. They're actually down, down slope of here. And so we're here at a drift mine. And what that means is at some point they had found or had a pretty good idea where this particular sema coal was. Um, this is, uh, we're in bituminous field here. Um, and this coal lays on a pretty flat um, pretty horizontal plane and so they had started digging this trench up probably following the coal seam they were tossing rock and everything off to the side um, this would have been where all the coal had come out of and then also would have doubled as drainage in this particular case and then we can see here the dirt that they had thrown up over the side kind of peters out and then subsidence gets a little bit shallower so it's believed to be that at one point right here was the original mine entrance and so as they dig for coal um, obviously you don't as much as you want to take it all um, you can't you need to leave some for supporting the roof as far as old methods go I know in long wall you take it all um, but that's designed to collapse so as they would have plunged this mine in would have mined a room, left a pillar, that would hold up the roof, hopefully. Um, you're also using timbering and cribbing to help support the roof. But over time, and as the mines reached the end of their life, a lot of times these coal pillars were robbed. And then you leave the roof unsupported and it would collapse. And even mines where they didn't rob pillars, eventually gravity's going to win and the mine's going to collapse. At this point here, these mines are extremely shallow. These were probably only about 10 feet below surface um, until it gets underneath this next ridge line. Then it gets about 30 to 40 feet um, of overburden. And so the subsidences aren't quite evident on surface yet. And so again, we came up our trench. Here was our entrance and kind of the Neat and interesting thing about this mine is being shallow at first, we can see just about everywhere that they dug. And so here's our first subsidence. And then this would have been the main drift, main gangway. As they came up, here was our first room. So you can see it's a little bit larger. And then if you look over right about here, there's more subsidences that continue out perpendicular to our drift entrance and then we head out this way so this room then continued straight in line with our drift entrance so as we come over here we can see just about everywhere where they had dug coal out now areas like these pose a hazard as I said to many many people in Pennsylvania and in the United States and internationally and so if this mine had shut down drift entrance was covered over somebody had built a house here or a road or anything like that as this starts to subside I mean these are dropping elevation of around 10 to 12 feet. So you're gonna have some serious problems. Um, and one of the causes for it, besides being unsupported roof, I hear a lot of people talking about how, um, oh, the, all the mine entrances up there were blasted shut. Yes, there's a good chance that they were blasted shut or um, backfilled, but the freeze-thaw cycle um, really kills a lot of mine entrances in Pennsylvania. So if we look at this rock up here, 
naturally, most rocks are going to have cracks in them, whether they're small or large. As you can see there. And water is going to get into those cracks. Come winter time, it's going to freeze and wedge them open. It thaws out. More water gets into the crack. It freezes, pries it open more. Eventually dropping the entrance, dropping the roof. Um, another thing, we see all these trees here. These roots go down through our soil into, um, into cracks in the roof, especially in the shallower areas. And as these roots grow and expand, they'll pry the roof down. This is not strictly an issue in bituminous areas and in anthracite regions. It gets a little bit more complicated. And so if you can imagine, as we've talked before, um, sorry for the wind. If this coal seam, instead of being horizontal, was pitched, whether it be straight up and down or at really any angle, for whatever distance they mine down, you have the chance of your subsidence dropping that far. Um, if you look at LIDAR maps or topographic maps of the anthracite region, you can pretty much tell where every outcrop of every vein is because there are large subsidences that basically drain down into these mines. Um, they either outcrop the mine on surface or um, just over time, what coal was left in between surface and the mine gave way and everything would fall in. We had talked about the hazard of if you had built something here, but also as you walk through mine lands, if let's say an area such as this had started to collapse, and actually if we look over here, you can tell there's not a lot of plant material built up on that edge. Kind of a, a good example that maybe that's still actively subsiding um, at a pretty good pace. And so there's no, no real ferns or saplings or anything else built up in that particular area. And so if that cavity, is, you got to think as the mine collapses, slowly going to fill what used to be the dugout area but that opening or that void is going to work its way towards the surface so if you're in an area like this and let's say there's only a foot left and the only thing it needed was a good rainstorm and you're walking through here you can fall into one of those voids um, this is why mine mapping and records are extremely important and people who can accurately overlay them are extremely important so uh, other other hazards with this if we look back towards our mine entrance as that collapsed like I said this goes uphill from here this coal seam does so all the water that used to drain out of that is now blocked so that can build up into the old workings and whether somebody comes through and accidentally digs it open or say we get a good wet season, hydrostatic pressure, that water built up in all these mine workings can and most likely will eventually blow out the plug and have a serious issue and serious release of um, acid mine drainage. So when I said about big cracks, if you look here, if that was, um, if that had some snow blown over it or a lot of sticks fell down through and covered that over with leaves. That there is probably only a six or eight foot drop, but definitely enough to hurt you. And where we see the leaves at the bottom, um, that's not even to say that that is the bottom. Um, and so I am accepting a risk being out here showing this. And you can see this crack propagates down through here and then splits off, heads this way, and up under the ridge line. You can see another area there along that dead tree comes back this way. Um, 
So I said mine mine subsidence, whether it's a coal mine or hard rock mine, wherever you are in, in Pennsylvania, uh, you need to do your research to see if maybe some mining activities took place under your property. Uh, it can save you a lot of money in the in the long run or a lot of time by maybe moving where you wanted to build something or having your property insured for such a thing. Uh, we'll get out, as always, and um, go to some more locations that have this issue. Uh, I appreciate everyone being patient as we shed our 40 plus inches of snow up on top here. And you can see down in these cracks, there is still some snow. Um, and we're gonna get to more locations, get some more videos made, show more examples of this. We get down anthracite region, or over to the anthracite region, show us some larger subsidences. Um, hopefully get down Southwest PA, and discuss some of the issues with um, long wall mining. Again, sorry for the wind noise. Um, where, like I said, long wall is designed to leave no coal pillars. It takes all the coal and allows the ground to collapse behind it, which eventually does become evident on surface. Um, it may not drop much, but it can be enough to damage foundations of homes, um, creeks, and other things as such. See, even as we go higher up on this, this ridge line, um, you can see where this horizontal rock comes across and then buckles down in and it's opened up into a pretty decent crack there. guess that's another thing a lot of people come to these areas and think that's the mine entrance and go crawling in there and that is not the mine entrance um, the mine's still about 10 to 15 feet below us so it makes for very hazardous conditions that's why it's important to stay out stay alive appreciate everyone tuning in today so we're getting more more videos up Gonna get to some more areas. Hope everyone's doing well. Um, we're gonna get a list of some of the shows we're gonna be at this year um, with displays of different mining items and doing some seminars and things like that. So again, appreciate everyone's support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, we've got YouTube and Facebook. So Check us out at Band of Mines of Pennsylvania. Again, everyone have a great day. Thank you.